Hello and thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be about data and graphing, but more specifically, it's going to be an introduction into frequency tables. So when I'm talking about data and graphing, I'm talking about information. That's what data is. And when we graph it, we organize that data. So basically, data and graphing is putting information together in an organized way. And the way we're going to organize data today is on a frequency table. And the word frequency actually is telling us how often a piece of data occurs. So let's look at some of the most common frequency tables that you'll see. This frequency table you can see is a frequency table with digits. The data or the frequency is represented with numbers in standard form. And you can see that the title tells me that this is about miles driven per day. The day and the miles are labels. Here in this column, each day is represented as a list. So I have miles on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. And Monday, 30 miles were driven. Tuesday, 32 miles were driven. So it's important when you're looking at frequency tables that you pay attention to the labels and you pay attention to the describing words. They're going to help you read your graph a lot better. Another type of frequency table is a frequency table with tallies. So as you can see this one, the title is Favorite Foods. Here is a list of your food in this column. You have tally marks and you have the frequency. So on this table, you would read the tally mark and then put the frequency in the frequency box. So the number of students who liked pizza was 44 and you list your frequency in the box. Now on many tables you'll have missing information. In this case, your frequency is what's missing and you have to fill that in with the information they did give you. Another example of frequency tables are tables that have a range. So for example, this represents books and students' desks. I have books labeled in this column and students in this column. So I know that six students had zero to three books in their desk. 15 students had four to five books in their desk. Six to seven books were in three students' desks. So each one of these frequency tables is one that you might see on some of your work. So let's answer some questions about a frequency table with tallies. The fourth grade teachers at Smithville Elementary asked their students what their favorite foods are. They recorded the students' favorite foods on the frequency table below. Record each answer in the blank box next to the question. So here is your frequency table. This example was used previously. Here is my food, tally marks, and frequency. And you're asked to answer these questions below about that frequency table. Now a strategy that I tell my students to do is Go ahead and put the information in the frequency table before you start answering the questions and everything will move a lot faster and you won't have to go back and forth so much. So how many students liked pizza? Uh, if I count my tally marks, I see that 44 students liked pizza. Hamburgers, if I count, I see that 37 liked hamburgers. 18 students like sandwiches. 36 students like hot dogs and 50 students liked mac and cheese. So I see that my labels are here. I have already filled in my frequency table and now I'm ready to answer the questions. So just by looking at the data I already have, I can kind of already answer some questions in my mind. I know the most favorite food. I know the least favorite food just by looking at the data that I have. So which was the student's favorite food? That's question number one. Well, the favorite food is the one that has the highest number of students who voted for it. So the highest frequency is 50, and that would be mac and cheese. So that is student's favorite food. Let's look at number two. Which two foods did a total of 80 students like? So that tells me that one number plus another number is going to equal 80 and which two foods if I added them together would end up equaling 80. Well let's look at our numbers here. Which two foods when I add them up equal 80? Well I know that pizza is 44 and I know that hot dogs is 36 so when I add those together I get 
80. So I'm going to say that those two foods are pizza and hot dogs. Let's look at number three. Which food do students like that is half the number of students who liked hot dogs? Well, let's look at hot dogs. I see that hot dogs is 36. So I've got to find a number that is half of 36. And I'm going to let you figure that out. What is half of 36? And that would be the answer to this box. Let's go to number four. What is the difference of the student's most favorite food and their least favorite food. Well, I already filled out my frequency table and I know that the most favorite food is mac and cheese and that's 50. And the least favorite food is sandwiches, that's 18. And I'm having to find the difference of these foods. So I know that difference means I'm going to subtract. So when you take 50 minus 18, you'll be able to answer this box and I'll let you work on that. Last question, how many students are represented on the frequency table? This one is simple and straightforward. You have all of the students who voted here and you basically have to add them up according to each food that they liked. And when you get that sum, you'll find out how many students are represented on the frequency table. I hope this video about frequency tables was helpful. If you'd like to see more helpful graphing videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in any of the resources featured in this video, please read the description box below. Thank you for watching.